Hello again, my name is Jay Alice. Thank you for watching the Cottage Food Operation video series. Today's episode is going to be about the approved foods list. This is the first step on determining whether or not you are going to be a CFO. You might have a product in mind already, some cookies or some cake or some sort of product that you have been making for a while that you'd like to take to the next level. The first step is to determine if it's on the approved foods list. The approved foods list is a limiter as to what you can do. The simplest way to understand it is perishable versus potentially hazardous. Perishable items are things that can go stale, can get hard, oxidize, but not necessarily mold and get rotten and cause problems. For example, everybody loves fresh out of the oven baked cookies. They are the, one of the best things in the entire world. Nothing or very little is more delicious than a fresh baked cookie straight out of the oven. However, that cookie, if left out on the counter for a week, is going to get stale. It's going to get hard. It's basically going to turn into a hockey puck. But taste-wise, it's still going to be good. You might chip a tooth eating it, but it's still going to taste good. And it's not going to make you sick. The difference between that which is perishable and that which is potentially hazardous is what is in it. For instance, a glass of milk, or a gallon of milk for that matter, left on the counter for eight hours, you will not want to drink. It has bacteria and other agents in it that can go bad, can turn sour, and can make you sick. Same can be said of meat. If you leave a piece of chicken out on the counter for six hours, or a piece of beef out on the counter for six hours, chances are you're not going to want to eat it because it's going to cause problems with your system later, as well as potentially send you to the hospital. So, in essence, Perishable is something that can get worse over time in terms of quality, but won't necessarily cause you physical harm if you eat it. Potentially hazardous is something that over a period of time can cause you potential medical issues. Another way to look at it is this. Does your product need refrigeration? If your product needs temperature control, then it will not be approved on the approved food list. Temperature controls means that it either has to be held cold or it has to be held hot. Either one of those situations are not acceptable under a CFO. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the approved foods list. So the approved food list has a number of different items on that, categorized in different ways. In the first category are baked goods without cream, custard, or meat fillings. Examples would be bagels, baklava, biscuits, bread, brownies, buns, cake, churros, coconut macaroons, cookies, crackers, cupcakes, donuts, whether they're fried or baked, empanadas, but only fruit empanadas, flatbreads, fruit, nut, and seed bars, macarons, with approved buttercream, or you can use jelly fillings, muffins, pastries, pies, fruit only, pizzelles, quick bread, samosas, but only fruit, tamales, but fruit only, tarts, tortillas, torts, waffles, whether they're fried or baked, and waffle cones. Two, Candies and confections, examples of that would be brittles, candied apple, candied popcorn, balls, caramel or chocolate style, caramels, cotton candy, chocolate covered non-perishables, including marshmallows, nuts, candy, dried fruit, potato chips, or any combination thereof. Edible dessert sprinkles, including sanding and crystallized sugars, non pareils confetti, sequins, Druggies, sugar shapes, sugar strands, also known as jimmies, confis, mini chocolates, and pralines. Freeze-dried candies, fudge, ground chocolate, hard candy, marshmallow bars, 
marshmallows that do not contain egg, popcorn balls, salted caramel, spiced sugars, and toffee. Number three, extracts containing at least 70 proof or 35% food grade for human consumption ethanol alcohol. Only those listed or combinations of those listed are allowed. Those are apple, apricot, blackberry, blueberry, cherry, chocolate, clove, cinnamon, cranberry, grapefruit, lemon, lime, orange, peach, pear, pineapple, pomegranate, raspberry, strawberry, and vanilla. If you're going to make vanilla extract, be sure not to drink all the vodka or bourbon. Number four, dried, dehydrated, and freeze-dried foods. Examples would be baking mixes, bean soup mixes, cereals, coffee, roasted or freeze-dried, fruit, fruit powders, fruit roll-ups, grain mixes, granola, ground chocolate, herb and herb blends, hot chocolate mix, mole paste, pasta, popcorn, potato chips, seasoning salt, spice mix or rubs, tea trail mixes, vegetables, vegetable chips, and vegetable soup mixes. Number five, frostings, icings, fondants, and gum paste that do not contain egg, cream, or cream cheese. Examples would be buttercream, either traditional vegan or chocolate, fondant, regular or chocolate, flat icing, gum paste with pasteurized egg, edible images, sugar glazes, vegan gum paste, frosting and icings made with meringue powder, powdered eggs, or pasteurized eggs are allowed. Six, honey and sorghum syrups. Seven, fruit butters, jams, jellies, and preserve. These in particular, uh, while you can make them, need to comply with Part 150 of Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations. Fruit butters, jams, jellies, and preserves. These are a little bit more difficult to make because they have to adhere to a, another layer of regulation, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Number eight, nuts, nut mixes, and nut butters. Number nine, powdered drink mixes made from manufactured ingredients. These drink mixes, however, cannot be labeled with the word protein because the amount cannot be determined. Number 10, vinegars and mustards. Examples would be mustard without eggs, vinegars, and fruit and used vinegars using only high acid fruits such as apple, blackberry, blueberry, cherry, crab apple, cranberry, grape, gooseberry, grapefruit, huckleberry, kumquat, lemon, lime, loganberry, nectarine, orange, peach, plum, pineapple, pomegranate, quince, raspberry, strawberry, tomatillo, and youngberry. As I said before, fruit butters, jams, jellies, and preserves need to adhere to further federal regulation. In essence, what that is, is you can only use high acid ingredients, such as the ones that are listed there under vinegars and mustards. What you cannot do is use low acid ingredients, such as peppers, to create something like pepper jelly. The problem there is that when you do so, low acid ingredients may cause the formation of botulism within your product. And as a CFO, they want to ensure that everything that you make is shelf stable and free from any sort of contaminants or potential hazards. So another thing I'd like to talk to you about the approved foods list is the fact that it is amendable. The most recent amendment was June 10th of this year. Prior to that, some items such as egg whites, pasteurized eggs, and some of the vegan cream cheeses could not be used. They have recently been added to the list. So if you have a product that you think should be on the approved foods list, you can petition to get the approved food list amended. 
I won't lie to you though, it is a somewhat lengthy process and there is a, a good deal of time involved, but it is possible and the list has greatly expanded from where it originally started. So, as I said, determining whether or not your product is on the approved food list is step one. If it is, awesome. If it is not, there are other options, fear not. Thanks for watching along. My name is Jay Alice. You can contact me through my email address, which is jallis, J-A-L-L-I-S, at iesmallbusiness.com. You can call our office at 951-781-2345 and ask for me, Jay Alice, and I will be able to help you not just with the CFO, but any other food industry uh, needs you might have. In addition, you can go to our website at ocie-smallbusiness.org. O-C-I-E-smallbusiness.org. Thank you.